Okay, so this is a this is gonna be a little bit shorter of a topic. Um, this is actually this is more generic than the re revolutions we've done uh, revolving uh, to get areas. But I think you'll find it's a nicer one to deal with because instead of having to envision, you know, what is the shape gonna be, they actually tell you uh, a lot more information about it. So for example, um, it, this is kind of like what we were just working on here. When we look at shapes that when you slice them, you get circles, right? You get discs or washers. That's what we just dealt with. But of course, there's other things like uh, this pyramid here. Um, if you slice the pyramid, you can end up getting squares, right? If you slice through the middle of the pyramid, every section you do is going to be a square. Um, this one here, uh, this is kind of like a wedge. If you chop it off, the piece that you're left with, each section that you cut out, this, uh, this thing right here is a triangle. So you could find the area of that funny looking wedge by adding up all the triangles. So here's the idea that uh, when you know what the cross section looks like, we're doing the same thing we did last block, but instead of dealing with circles, which are pi r squared, right? This was when we were dealing with circles only. We're going to say we just want to add up all the slices of area in the figure. So for example, you can figure out the volume of a cylinder by adding up all those sliced up circles. Right? You can figure out the volume of a pyramid by adding up all the slices of squares. And it's the same as you've been working with in terms of the revolutions. When you're perpendicular to the x-axis, it's in terms of x. When you're perpendicular to the y-axis, it's in terms of y. Okay, so we're going to stick with X just because I know it's hard enough as it is. So we'll stay where everyone's most comfortable and we'll be doing most of this with uh, respect to X. Um, but just to illustrate how it works, um, I've copied some 3D pictures on there to help you see and uh, sort of visualize what these actually would do. So here's the two graphs we're looking at. And in three dimensions, the way the picture is presented, it's a little harder to see the two graphs. So I'll show you what they would look like um, for example, in the first one, you have a parabola which is um, x squared minus 1. So roughly you're going to have this parabola. And you have the line x plus 1, which is like this. So here is the figure that has been um, expanded. This is the base. If this is sitting on the ground right now, this uh, black region I shaded in, it's the base of this figure. So here is the two graphs. If you look at it in the three dimensions, they've turned it to make uh, it perpendicular so they could have a three dimensions. So it's a little harder to see, but that's the, the same figure. Okay? So again, if you imagine slicing this up into a whole bunch of pieces, they're telling you that when you slice it, what you're going to get is you're going to get a square jumping out for the uh, slice that you've just cut. So it's not, um, it's still jumping out of the board like before, okay? And the area of a square is going to be just multiplying x uh, one side by itself. So what we have to figure out is, you know, how far is it if I want to know, like, maybe this is my square, how do I get the volume of that square? Right? It's going to jump out. So how do I get the area of that square? I need to know one of the lengths. So how could I figure out how long it is from here to here? How could I write up an equation that would do that? Exactly. It's going to be this top one minus the bottom one. That'll tell me what the length of the one side is. So if I want to know what the area is, the area is going to be for one side, it's x plus 1, this is my top one, minus x squared minus 1. Okay. And this, it's a square, so to get the area, I square it. Okay. So I'll collect my like terms here. It's going to be, um, let's see here, uh, x minus x squared plus 2. Uh, that gives me the area for that uh, slice. And I have to add up all the slices. So if I look at my picture, here and here, those are the bounds for where my slices start and end. So 
the integral that I'm going to set up, it starts over here where they first meet, and that's at negative 1. And it ends up here where the second time they meet is at 2. So you can also see it if you look at this graph. You can also solve it algebraically if we were to take a look at x plus 1 being equal to x squared minus 1. Um, that's going to be x squared minus x minus 2. So x minus 2, x plus 1. We can do it in a number of ways. But that gives me the bounds of where I'm adding all these slices up. Okay, and this is what my area is. It's this whole thing squared. So it's going to be this for each slice. And that will tell me if I add up all those slices, all those slices add up to the whole volume. Okay? So in this case, there is no revolution. Our job is to figure out if we make one cut and we slice the object, how can we describe the area of each slice? So in this case, that's the area for one slice right there. Add them all up and you have the whole volume. Okay, so let's take a look at the second one. Okay, very similar. Rectangles of height one. Now, I'll redraw it for you. Here's the... Uh, graph. So here's my parabola, and here's my line, and this is the region that it's the base of my solid. Okay. So this time I know that no matter where I take it, okay, it might be that wide, but it only comes out one unit. It's no longer a square. It's always one high. That's why you can see here, you can kind of, it's been sheared off all at the same height. Everybody has a height of one. So, how do you find the height of, or not the height, sorry, how do you find the area of a rectangle? Just any old rectangle. What's the formula for a rectangle? Length times width, Length times width base times height, whatever. Um, so, to, to answer this question, we need to look at this sliver and figure out how wide is the base and how tall is the height? Okay, so anyone want to take a stab at one of them? Excellent. Hey, height is one. We've been told that the height must be one. So the area is base times one. So that means if you look at the picture jumping off the page, right, this height is one. And this here would be the base that I'm still looking for, right? So in my picture, here's the base from here to here. So how would I write up an equation that could describe the base of this rectangle? Or maybe you could describe for me how to get it. How do I know what the height here is? Someone other than Mona this time. Peter, how do you do this one? Yeah, it's this piece, which is x plus 1, the top, minus this piece down here, which is x squared minus 1. So the area here is going to be x plus 1 minus x squared minus 1. That's the base times the height. So the area for any sliver that I, that I cut in this shape is going to be um, let's see here, x minus 